What's up, Rectech family? Watch this whole video and see if you can spot Rex. If you do, put in the comments section the timestamp that you see him and your favorite dish of the day, and you may win something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody see me? Are we not on Matthew Acosta's personal page? If we're not being on Matt's personal page, that would be great. So we don't have to stop and restart. The smoke's going in the right direction. It's going out of way. Breeze in my face. It's a great breeze. Jack Patio here. We got an absolutely beautiful, beautiful event for sure. It's a fun spot. All right. All right, I think we're gonna get this uh, shindig started. It is 1.30. We are starting our weekly live cooking demonstration we call Fun Day Friday. I'm Jody Flanagan, your Tech Grills expert, and I am in beautiful Cartersville, Georgia with our man, Chef Greg Muller. We've got the co-founder, Rod Cundy, right here with us. And we are gonna introduce to you the owner and founder of Grill Greats, Mr. Brad Barrett. Howdy. And then we've got Chef Michael here. Nice. And we are in, in Cartersville. We are at Brad's house. We are on the grill great deck. That's what you call it? We call it the, the grilling deck. The great grilling, grilling deck. deck. Yes. You guys check it out. It's beautiful, beautiful weather. Today is a beautiful day. We're celebrating National Virginia Day. So all of our friends and family out there in Virginia, if you can put your name in the comments section. We'd love to, we'd love to shout out your name. Um, let's just get right to it. We want to congratulate Mr. Austin, Austin Persinger. Who is our YouTube winner with a correct answer of 30 minutes and three seconds? Congratulations, Austin. We also want to congratulate Patrick. Uh, O'Doyle Rules 545. Greg? <laughs> we had our caption contest. Are we going to get to hear his caption that he came up with? Yes, I got it. Nice. <laughs> 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 So his uh, winning caption was, when you slide into her DMs and ask her to come over for some pork butt and chill. <laughs> <laughs> so we did. And, work? Uh, yeah. And we didn't Double have, time. I'm not going to lie to you guys, we didn't have a lot of good uh, uh, entries for that one, so kind of disappointed in my rec technician. I'm going to need you to pick it up a little bit. Uh, Patrick, that was from Instagram. We really do appreciate you. Uh, but we do that caption contest every Tuesday. Make sure uh, you go follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, that way you can participate. Uh, so to the left for me, Olivia. Uh, but we are on the grilling deck here in Cartersville uh, with Brad, and we are going to be doing steaks today. Uh, we've got some flat iron steaks. We've got some tri-tip steaks. Uh, we've also got maybe a little mini SCA competition going on today uh, with some good friends of ours. Uh, but it's going to be an amazing. Oh, there we go. Speaking of steaks. Speaking of beautiful steaks, we got some tri tip. Yes. I guess we're going to need to bring your flat iron. That's right, right over there. Olivia's right. going to bring this Thank flat you. iron over and check that out. But we had a great fun day Friday last week. Absolutely, we did. We had uh, a great fun day Friday. Game day round two. Game day 2.0. We, uh, we did that Tex Mex, we did that drunken high smoked buffalo chicken dip. Um, <laughs> and how could you forget the side that went with that? We had our elote salad, right? You can't get that corn. That was, that was great. That was, it was absolutely ridiculous. It was awesome. I heard it was all over in the beer. It was. It was. <laughs> that, is, that is not going to be a caption in this contest. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be a caption in this contest. I think it might be. Uh, right? That was awesome. Um, but to, this episode is going to be amazing. You guys are going to learn absolutely everything you can learn about steaks, cooking them, where they come from how to prepare them, how to prep them. Um, and then these guys are masters. You know, this is their game. Steak is their game. Uh, they're professionals at it. We're gonna learn a lot from them today. If you don't like Grow Great on Facebook or Instagram, go right now, immediately right now. Take out your phone. Make sure you like Grow Great on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we also wanna take time to uh, say we, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with everybody uh, in the path of Hurricane Florence. Um, you guys, our friends at Operation Barbecue Relief are out there right now. So if you could, you know, take time today to go visit their website and make a donation to them. Uh, they are uh, helping people 
all over the Carolinas. So uh, our thoughts and prayers are with you guys. Um, but we're going to get this started. I think we're going to go live every 30 minutes today. 30 minutes. So you're looking at 1.30 right now, 2 o'clock, 2.30, and then 3 o'clock. We, of course, will be finishing it up. Um, but it is amazing to be here. Brad, thank, thank you, you so much. Great well, lineup of grills, too. It's so nice, nice to we're see surrounded by the, the whole new lineup of rec decks. We had to clear the deck for you. Guys. No, no, yeah. And we really do appreciate you uh, clearing, putting some of the competition up there off to the side. At least for today. <laughs> Love my <laughs> deck. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but right, yeah, we are guys. we are excited to be here. We really do appreciate you, um, Brad. For those of the uh, folks out there that don't know about Grill Great and how it came about, uh, if you could tell us just a little bit about uh, about your awesome product. Uh, it's really just an aftermarket grill product. The, 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 the layman's terms I like to use: think of tires when they were single ply, and then the steel belted radials come out. They were so much better. They lasted longer. They worked better. That's what Grill Grates are. They they're a sear and a sizzling device that works on any grill. And we're going to demonstrate that today. You'll hear some searing and sizzling going on. So we make them for pellet grills and Kamado grills and gas grills, camping grills, camping. no grills. Fire, <laughs> you can put it right over fire. Just need fire. Just need fire. So and Michael's our grill master. Just as a little background on him, are we doing those intros at the next time? Are we doing that now? Or are we doing that on the uh, next What are we looking phase? at now? Well, well, we'll Please wait. introduce we'll, yourself. We'll give, yeah. a little, we'll give a little meat next second. You know, okay. So I came up with the business because I was that guy that burned everything. Or I'm cutting into it saying, oh, shit, it's not ready yet, or worse. <laughs> so I was that guy. Well, he's not that guy. Michael's a chef, trained chef, really knows his stuff. He's also our webmaster, grill master. He's got a great job in customer service. So we usually cook once a week. We're not quite as up to speed as the rec tech guys, but we like to get out front of our place and cook. So Michael's doing a lot of our chef work and helping our customers use our product like you guys do so well. I mean, I got to tell a story. I called your office yesterday, right? I was looking for you. And I couldn't get you, Jody. I hung up. I mean, literally, I'm calling you on the cell phone. I get a call back from from uh, some, your office. Hey, we, we just missed your call. How are you doing? Who's this? I mean, I got a call back within 60 seconds from Rectech. So your customer service is awesome, but that's what he does so well. And that's what you guys do so well. So enough about us for now, but let's have some fun with uh, Yeah, and it wouldn't be, we wouldn't product. be here. You know, without you guys, so it's all about the customers today. We want to teach you guys as much as we can. We want to show you as much as we can. Uh, so if y'all have any comments, any questions, anything that you want us to hit on, please, please, please make sure you put it in the comments section. Uh, also, uh, if, again, I can't stress enough. If you aren't, if you don't like Grill Great uh, on Facebook or Instagram, go right now. Go ahead and like them. Set your notifications. Uh, that way you know when we uh, are going live as well as they are going live. Um, but we are going to uh, get ready for the day. We'll be back at 2 o'clock. Um, Chef Michael Good. is going to be doing up some uh, flat irons. Um, we're we're going to go ahead and season these now. All right, yeah, cool. Yeah. Go ahead, hey, Chef. I'll tell you, you've got two world-class chefs here. I mean, absolutely. master chef, as I understand, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Oh, my God. So we're doing a tri-tip, and my we're steak's going to take a little longer than Michael's, <laughs> right? So we're going to do a reverse sear on this steak. So we're going to get this tri-tip, and a lot of times when you see it, of a big fat cap on the top, and the one cool thing about tri-tip, you want to be careful of it, it might be hard to see on camera, is about right here is going to be a vein. So the grain of the meat on this side is running over like here, and this side is running a little more along like this. So when we slice it, we'll slice on a bias, nice and thin over here, and then we'll actually separate these muscles and then slice this way. So one thing you want to do is, is now the tri-tip is located towards the hind quarter of the cow, so it gets a lot of work. And I know we talked about it the other week, around muscles that get a lot of blood flow, they get a lot of beef flavor to them, they tend to be a little more tough. Well, that's gonna be no problem because we're gonna cook this low and slow at 225. And we're gonna season this with our Savannah River Rub. So if you haven't picked up the limited edition Academy Spices at rectechgrills.com, don't miss out. You get both the Georgia Clay Rub and the Savannah River Rub and an awesome koozie for like 13 bucks. It's fantastic. So I went ahead and I trimmed this off and a little bit of fat on the top is okay, but make sure you get that fat cap off. You don't wanna be eating that. We're gonna go pretty liberal so with chef, this Savannah River Rub. We do absolutely. So normally, and it'll be this side. It is just a full cap of fat. You want to pull all that off because that smoke's not gonna penetrate that fat, and we want nothing but smoky, delicious flavor. Don't forget the sides. So stand it up. So we're gonna let this go at 225 for about two hours, hour and a half, and due to the magic of television, right here. We've got one cooked perfectly. So we're gonna pull this one off. 
is this probe was at 126. I'll do it right here on the board. And those wide pellet Wi-Fi controllers have two built-in platinum tip probes. We're going to cook this until it says 126. Now it's still reading a hot grill, but that'll go down to about 45 degrees. And what we'll do is later on, we'll let this rest, and then we will sear it off hot and fast and get nothing but delicious steaks slices out of that. You can see that that seam is going to be right here. So we'll actually slice that across the grain like this, and then again up like that. And that's going to be a delicious eating steak. And because we're letting it rest now, Chef, when we pull it off of the grill after it sears, we can immediately cut into it sardines. Oh, no right. doubt. You've already done the hard work. The grill's got it cooked. You're resting now. You're going to sear later, get some good color, some good crust, some good texture, good Maillard reaction, and that's going to be delicious. Very cool. Very good. Sweet. And so what do we have uh, right here, Chef Michael? We've got a couple flat iron steaks. Very so cool. keep the flies off. And flat iron is a cut that um, the uh, cattleman's industry decided that they needed to introduce some new cuts out there to the restaurant industry because people were shying away from beef because of the cost. And so they got creative with certain things and they found some really good cuts of meat. This guy comes from the shoulder. Um, it's right below the blade, if I'm not mistaken. And traditionally, this was a cut of meat that was either ground up or uh, used as a roast, but it has a, it, there's two muscles that were connected and there's a tough membrane between them. And they figured out if they removed the membrane and got rid of the other muscle, they were left with this really nice beefy flavor piece of meat, you know, gets a lot of action kind of like that. So uh, we got two of them here, and um, as you can see, they've got some nice marbling. It's uh, It's got a little connective tissue, so it requires that you cook it a little bit more than a normal steak. So these are probably gonna go to like 134 or something like that, kind of break that down a little bit. Um, to season, I always like to go with a little bit of oil of some kind to start. Lately, I'm on the duck fat kick, so we're gonna go with a little duck fat. And, when, and you've got spray duck fat. Spray duck fat, yeah. This guy out of uh, Nebraska, he's marketing this stuff, he's in Cabela's. I love it, it's good stuff. That's awesome. And it's, you know, supposed to, well, it is better for you than butter for oil. Oh, for sure. It's got less saturated fat. And, and it's, good flavor. And it's got good great flavor. Great flavor. Great flavor. Great flavor. And just like the ribeye mm. cap steaks we did a couple weeks back, when you cook this, it'll actually plump up and, and fatten. It sure So will. it'll look like a lot more steak, you know, unlike the steak you cook normally, they get smaller as you cook. These will actually plump up and, and be a little bigger. Yep. So starting out with a little base layer of the white lightning, BNO. I almost always start out with that with it, and anytime I'm cooking beef. And then I'm going with a little bit of uh, our buddy Sterling's What's Your Beef? Newton Booty. Newton Booty. Very cool. So this will add a little bit of color, a little sweetness. And what's the, what is the base of that, Chef? Is it going to be more salty? This one here is going to have a little bit more sweetness and uh, chili powder going okay. on. Very cool. Whereas this is going to give you your salt. They've got a little MSG, a little black pepper in yeah. there. So flip these guys over. Shout out and good luck to the boys of Boar's Night Out this weekend at the American Royal. Yep. Yes. One of the things I learned cooking steaks and you talk to these guys and a lot of them make their own rubs and these guys are making these rubs and they're winning oh, for sure. and then you've got these guys that come and they've got their uncle daddy's recipe that they're swore the whole family loves and tell you what their uncle daddy's recipe sucks <laughs> you know, something that's proven something that's won and you're gonna place you're gonna win if you cook that steak properly so it's basically my philosophy is I use the guys who know what they're doing as far as the seasonings go I combine the two of them I cook the steak properly I give it the respect it deserves, and generally speaking, people are happy. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, so we'll be back at two o'clock. We'll be firing off these flat iron steaks. Yeah, these are going to be a hot, fast cook. Nice. Yep. So we'll Absolutely. get the bullseyes cranked up. We've got the grill grates on those bullseyes. We'll go. Uh, it's a marriage cool. made in heaven. Grill grates and bullseyes, baby. Woo! It is the bullseye. Very nice. All right, we'll see you guys at 2. Thank you so much. Make sure you set your notifications. Uh, when we go off the air here, remember, we're going live on Twitter. Uh, so make sure you follow us on Twitter as well. Jordan's about to pop on up here. Uh, make sure you set uh, your notifications as well as check the stories. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff going on in the stories today. So make sure you guys check that out, okay? We'll see you at 2 o'clock. Now, is that, is that cooked, Chef? Is that you, are you all the way through? No, it's, it's 126. Please. We'll see where I am. Look closer. I have that. Uh, <laughs> that vinyl? No, I have Tom Jones' greatest hits. Actually. See you guys. Yeah, we do. Shameless plug.
Nice looking uh, pieces of meat for Joe. Sweat, tasty. Smells good. Tastes good. And we're back. So uh, we're, yeah. Chef Michael is going to take. Well, I'll let uh, I'll let the professional go ahead and describe what's going on. What you got going here, Chef Michael? All right. Yeah, we haven't got the flat iron steaks. We uh, season them up with a little bit of the duck fat spray. A little bit of the Boar's Night Out White Lightning went on there first as the base. And then we got a little bit of this uh, Newton Booty, what's your beef? Seasoned up both sides. And we're going to go ahead and get them on the uh, bullseye over here. Oh, hot and fast, she's I take hot it. Hot and fast, yeah, man. She's cruising right along. So, okay, okay. thank you, sir. Yeah, absolutely, sir. All right, get these going. Is there any particular way you want to put these on here, Chef? I'm going to go for diamonds on these. So I'm going to go, as you can see, just at an angle. So when I do my 45 degree turn, it'll land a nice grill mark on there. Absolutely. You can hear that sizzle, guys. That's my you can start sound. Yep. You can start seeing that. Uh, Y'all have a dripology. They have a term for it. It's called dripology. Fat and moisture hits the superheated valleys. It vaporizes directly below the food and just totally steaming it. Flavor to the, to the air here. And the great, the grill grates are an amazing, you know, they're amazing key to unlock uh, your culinary expertise. It's a really, uh, they're an amazing tool uh, to facilitate the heat, you know, as well as get those amazing grill marks on there, uh, as well as cook your food a lot faster. Right? Yeah, I mean, they they really just make cooking fun again, grilling fun again. I mean, I was a chef forever and ever and ever, and then I got in with uh, Brad and I kind of got away from being a chef so much and then I got into cooking more and more outside and all of a sudden it rekindled my spirit. So, you know, I went to culinary school, I ran restaurants forever and then I started working for Brad. It kind of went by the wayside, but he kept poking me, get cooking, get cooking, get cooking. And now I talk about it all day long to people on the phone and you hear these guys and they're just like, you know, I used to grill once or twice a month. Now I'm out there three, four times a week. I love it, I cannot get it. I mean, everything I cook, I cook outside. Gospel. Yeah, especially when you're down here in the south, you know, you really don't want to heat up your home. Nope. You know, so cooking outside is a way to bring people together, you know, as well as, um, you know, just, just keep the house happy. cool. Yeah, keep yeah. the house cool as well. Absolutely. Whoever hung out around the oven, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But we'll no, hang out around the rectex. Yeah. No yep. stories were ever told around the microwave. No. no. <laughs> Not at all. They were trying to the office. They the office microwave, but we won't go there. <laughs> okay. Speaking of standing next to an oven, it's kind of hot right here. No, like, we got a little warmth behind it's us. It's beautiful blue skies. Out. Yep. I mean, the only thing we're missing is some sand and some beach towels. Yeah, we can, I think you got a good trip coming up. We do. We do. It's called Sun Sand and Steaks, and it's going to be in the Bahamas in February, the first ever SCA steak cook off. Uh, we, we've done several events down there. We did one with uh, Meathead two years ago which was a blast. We, we filmed Big Green Egg commercials down there. So February 21st through the 24th, uh, we would love to have some of our friends from Rec Tech and uh, our friends out there to join us. You can also win the trip. You go to growgreat.com under the community tab, you will see the sun, sand, and steaks tab, and you can enter to win the trip. Some lucky couple's gonna win. Listen to this, you talk about a great trip. Tickets for two to the Bahamas. Uh, event fees for two dinners, two lunches, and breakfast, and an entry into the steak cook-off. So you can be next to Malcolm Reed and Lisa Guatney. We have two world food champions coming. Uh, Malcolm Reed, one of the best YouTube guys out there, is coming. So we're going to have a lot of pros. But somebody's going to win that trip. We give that away uh, in about five weeks. Yeah. So, um, I have to get on that. I don't think my wife would mind the trip. a trip. Yeah. Yes, and you should come. We're encouraging all of our friends to come. This is a real griller's dream trip. So, no, not to mention that it's in the Bahamas, but what is, what's the payout of that event? Brad? It's going to be a thousand bucks and, and a ticket to the uh, golden, you know, to the next year's version of the World Championship for the State Cook Off. Guys, so wow! We have both Ken and Brett coming. We've already got the judges sold out, so all the judges have already signed up, and the judging is done. <laughs> We've got fourteen cookers already signed up. Nice. Wow! So we're half full. The the restaurant, the hotels, the Green Turtle Clubs, fifty percent booked. Bluff House also has rooms. We got all that information up on the website. The and places, what website is that? Uh, Grillgreat.com. Oh, yeah. sure. Under the uh, Sun, Sand, and Steaks tab, under our community tab. Okay, I think we want to move you on. Flip from or are you yeah, still let me give a little talk about the Bahamas. Let's I'm going to get lost yeah. again. <laughs> and then you were talking about a 45 for Chef Can you uh, go into a little bit of detail for me? Well, I mean, basically, you're looking to pick it up and give it a 45 degree turn, and that way you achieve beautiful diamond sear marks. You know, if you just go willy nilly in it all over the place, you never know what you're going to get. So I'm going to lift and I'm basically going to put it back down. 
45 degrees the other way. Sometimes it's nice if you've got a bigger grill, you can go onto a hot portion of the surface, but the beautiful thing about this bullseye is it's plenty hot, so I'm not looking for any more hot surface. It's gonna do just fine. She's cruising right around. You see how Chef Greg mentioned these things plump up? You see how they're like they're getting fatter. And I mean, it's just, it's a great cut of meat. Like Chef Mike going hot and fast, I had to go low and slow. You got to be different, right? So we're cooking a tri-tip today. So to recap how we did this, we seasoned this up with our Savannah River Rub. This was our one of our featured rubs at our RecTech Academy this past May. This is a great blend, salt, pepper, there's some spices in there, some herbs. We seasoned this tri-tip up. We cooked it at 225 to an internal about 125 degrees. We've got one purring along over here, just putting along. And with our wide pellet Wi-Fi controller, I can tell we have an internal of 90 degrees. But look at this thing, just happy, happy, happy. I'm gonna go for about two hours. We'll pull it off. This has been resting for about uh, 20 minutes or so. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get it seared off on our bullseye with the, uh, the sear kit. And one thing you can do too is with the duck fat, you can either spray your meat and you can even lubricate your, your cooking surface. And I'll do the same thing, I'll probably let this go about four minutes aside and get some good uh, color and my reaction and crispness and texture to that tri-tip and since we rested before we don't have to rest again we can go ahead and slice it but we will wait and we will uh, serve it all together so again tri-tip is a really good blank canvas it's a really great beefy cut of meat it pairs up really well with a good rich creamy mushroom sauce does really well with like a spicy chimichurri honestly a little barbecue sauce you can't screw it up yeah. can you inject it you can, you can inject it. Yeah, there's it's a good bit such of, a good beef flavor though. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I mean, I'd keep really it pretty good. neutral. There's so yeah. much, so much intermuscular fat in there. It makes it nice and tender. It's a delicious cut of meat. You just want to make sure that the key to tri tip is slicing it. But we'll show you how to do that uh, a little later on. Now, would you want? Would you rather uh, slice it, you know, thin and, and, and slice slivers and eat it that way, or is it more like a ribeye to where you can cut chunks and kind of? It's probably tender enough you can go in chunks. But the good eatability of that, you want to slice it fairly thin. So if you're looking for a really good cut of meat to like a really delicious dynamite steak sandwich. I mean, slice that up on a baguette with some horseradish mayonnaise. Yeah. I mean, you're just yeah. getting yeah. the meat sweats right now. You got to go that. across that grain, though. Absolutely. And when you thing. hit that, that that fat seam, it's it's easier to separate that muscle so you can get both of those uh, slices because you don't want to cut that with the grain. It'll be tougher nails. Yeah. And even eating a regular ribeye, you always want to go against the grain. Absolutely. I know a lot of people when they're at the T-bone steak and. They get the steak right in there and they start diving in. No, go ahead and situate your steak in front of you. You know, that way you're cutting against the grain and everybody's going to be tender. So, very cool. Um, yeah, flip these over. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll flip, Michael, and then we'll flip. show everybody what's going on in the bowl over here. All right. Do the one on the back here first. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's pretty. Nice ear marks. Not too dark. Listening to the sun. This thing just got turned on like yeah. 10 minutes ago. That thing has not been running all that. It's the griller's grill, Brad. That's yeah, why you love it. So those right. are up. We'll check. Well, it's the first pellet grill that's really a grill. Yeah, and that's why I like it so much because I don't do that much low and slow, but I grill on that thing probably four times a week. Yeah. Bullseye does a great low and slow though. Some dynamite ribs, dynamite chicken wings, good brisket. It's a little different from other grills that it's more of a, a drier heat, whereas the, the RT340 and the, the 700 is more of a moist heat, but it makes some lean ribs and barbecue <laughs> off that grill too. Absolutely. Yeah. It's right. the grill that can smoke. Well, I'm going to have to do that the next time we smoke. So we'll be back at 2.30. Oh. Well, we got a bunch of hot and fast going on behind us. Don't forget about the low and slow. We're oh, doing, you got some uh, sides too. Yeah, we're, we'll, we still have Chef Greg's tri-tip on there going low and slow. And then we've got some awesome sides that Chef Michael has already prepared for us. Uh, we're just keeping these warm uh, inside the RT 700. That is a pretty grill. This is the the bull. Yes, sir. This is the bull, the RT 700. And of course, you know, we dropped this off for you. Oh no, no, no. So it's wow. it's it's come, you know, equipped with everything. We've got the front folding shelf on it. I like the competition card. We also got really the competition nice. card on it. Absolutely. Uh, all of these are available at rectechgrills.com. You can see we've got it set at 225, and it's holding a very tight 225. Uh, you're going to see uh, with the Rectex and the Smart Grill technology that's going to hold the temperature a lot more precisely. It's not just going to average the temperature. 
Um, but we've got the dual meat probes. Um, we're also able to monitor this from our app as well. Really? So That's, it's a Wi-Fi enabled grill as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, you can be in the you can be in the Bahamas. Watching the yeah. As long as you've got internet signal, wow. you'll be able to turn your grill on here and turn the grill on for Susan if she you know if she's like getting home or anything like that. So we'll, we'll be nice back at what two thirty. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Brad. Thank you so much once again oh, for letting happy us to have you guys on our deck, oh, man. man. You kidding me? This is great. so much fun. It's Friday. We're not inside. We're outside cooking. We're hanging out with friends. We're having beverages. Monday, Friday. I think we, have a, we have a tradition to keep now. You guys are setting it up. This is the <laughs> epitome of Monday, Friday. But we'll be back at 2:30. Uh, Thank you guys so much. Do, 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 do. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Make sure you check out Twitter for any behind the scenes action. 632, 642. See me cry. On Twitter. Chef, what do you what kind of what do you call that dance? What is that move? What is that move? It's the bad move. It's bad. Jody, do you have a steak joke? Oh, uh, hold on, wait a second. I think I might. I think I might. Hold on. Why can't cows get married? They're a little. No, yeah, I'm sorry. Watermelons. That's melons, bro. Can't cows get married? He's going to get All right. What's it called? When one cow spies on another cow. A steak out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Prove your dad. You got good dad jokes. Oh boy, yeah. I've got a, I've got a whole team of seven people to get me dad jokes. <laughs> Thank you, it's great, to everyone who got me dad jokes. Love it. But yeah, now slice it up. It comes to yeah, almost going on? All right, our prime right. time. So, chef, what what we cook? We got the flat iron, seasoned up with the uh, BNO. We got the loot and booty, duck fat. Cooked them to about 135, 140. So I see you lining that up, Chef. Can you show everybody kind of where that grain is uh, if they lose it at the house? If they where the grain is and yeah, how it's absolutely. running. Well, anytime absolutely. you cut the steak, you don't want to see strings. You want to see a cross section. So you've got a cross section, all these little individual fibers. That that tells you right there that the the fibers are running Beautiful. that direction. So Beautiful. I'm going across them. But this baby is just, look at that beautiful, all that juice coming out of it. It's oozing some deliciousness right there. Yep. So you need the bread or the potatoes to kind of sop it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we haven't had that. I think we've got a bread assistant. A bread assistant? Yes. A Hawaiian roll with some horseradish mayo on there. Mm-hmm. All day long. And you know, over the years we've learned that you know that's not the blood that's actually coming out of the meat. Myoglobin. That's myoglobin, correct? Wait, what was that word? I'll let the I'll let the chefs uh Myoglobin, which is basically the pigment that makes up the red color of blood. But it's essentially water. Huh. Because meathead says it's not blood. Yep. And it's the same thing it's with tasty. chicken, correct? Uh, when you, you can cook a chicken, you know, to 165 degrees and still see, I guess, the myoglobin. A little bit of pink, sure, That's absolutely. Right. I don't think it's, it's a little bit more exaggerated with beef because it's a red meat. Are you going to let us taste before you cut the whole next one? No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, he's got to make sure which one's better. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad I skipped lunch. So you really are, you're cutting that very much like a flank. Yeah, but you see how all of a sudden I've got grain? So I'm flipping it over, I want to come across on this side on it. Yeah, because there's going to be two muscles laying on top of each other and there's going to be about a quarter inch piece of sinew that run in between. And depending on how nice that butcher is when they trim that, you might see that come in play. You saw it towards the end of that second steak. Mm -hmm. uh, be a little more chewy, but it's still yeah, going to be still a nice, good easy piece of meat. Nice, flavorful. I'd say it eats better like this than if they were to grind it up. I agree. It's just a waste if they grind it up now. All right, no, so the tri-tip here, if you notice, I notched where that fat seam was right here so I don't screw up that grain. So I've got grain running like this and then grain running like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these muscles right here, and then I'm going to slice this. Just like that. 
And again, you can see that beautiful smoke ring. And now this piece, I'm gonna turn this way and that grain's running like this. We'll go ahead and slice just like that. And again, the same thing, right across the grain. So, you see how nice and tender that is? I can just pull that apart. That's beautiful. Nice work, Chef. And both of, both of these pieces of meat are, are pretty much readily available at your local grocery store, right guys? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. And that's the cool thing. You guys just don't have to go to a butcher for this stuff. Um, this yeah. is, you know, this is at your Kroger's. This is at your, your BJ's. This is at uh, a Costco. <laughs> I guess, I guess you insist. I say it every week to him, but you knock this out the park, man. Wow. But look at that smoke ring. It's beautiful. We didn't inject this, but just, I mean, I'm, I'm going to ruin beautiful. this. Just look Go at ahead. it. Just Get in there, Brad. Oh, get the, yes. the drippy yeah. dudes. Well, Brad, it's your deck. Mmm. Like you love the grill, huh? Oh, my God. The flavor's fabulous. Mmm. Mmm. That rub. And we use that mm -hmm. in that... That's the Vanna River Rub. MSG free, gluten free. There's no binders, no anti caking agents. That's nothing but 100% pure deliciousness. <laughs> I hadn't used that before. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. So, for this segment, I want to introduce uh, part of the Grill Breaks and Rectech family. This is our steak expert. It's Peggy Grimes. Peggy, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here on the Real great grilling deck with my right. Rectech family. It's awesome. We've got some fun things to think we're going to be doing this afternoon. It's so. awesome. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Ah, thank you. I always know I'm going to have good time, good people, great beverages, always for Fun Day Friday. And, in, uh, and I'm drinking on the emergency drinking beer from our friends at uh, Wild Heaven, right? It's Wild Heaven's yeah. Brewery, right? Local yeah, Wild Heaven. Yeah. Local brewery right here. <laughs> but Heavy's gonna, uh, Peggy's going to run us through uh, and tell us all about the SCA. Cool, great. Before I start talking about SCA, the State Cooking Associ Cook Off Association, I want to briefly mention again the um, Operation Barbecue Relief. It's been active this week. Uh, they've been mobilized since early this week to respond to those in need that have been affected by Hurricane Lawrence. That's her name. There are too many out there. Um, they've been pre-positioned, already feeding people at a staging area. Um, Really, it's a volunteer organization, great people. Really, if you can volunteer, if you're interested in that, or donate to volunteer, you can text OBR to 51555. And if you'd like to donate to help them out, it's OBR to 41444 or visit OBR.org. That's just a little bit about a great organization I'm proud to be associated with. Also, why they brought me here is I'm part of the State Cook-Off Association. I've been cooking competitively for the last two years. Um, I'm a certified judge with them, which kind of helps me uh, have a little bit more knowledge than just a Joe Schmo off the street. Um, I've been fortunate enough to qualify for the State Cook-Off World Championships each of the last two years, and this year I have been cooking on the Rec Tech Bullseye and the Rec Tech Trailblazer bullseye which of course you might might not know it's the official pellet cooker of the state cook-off association Woo! Woo! Bullseye. Yeah. it's been awesome it's easily portable it's let me walk in the top 10 more times than i haven't walked this year so um a little bit about the sea brett galloway and ken phillips out of texas formed this in 2014 i believe it was it's the original one-day cook-off association. They use a set of standardized rules for every cook-off. Um, so you know it's going to be fairly run and you're going to have a heck of a good time. Doesn't take a lot to do a steak cook-off. I cooked last year out of a Camaro. All you need is a cooler, <laughs> some sort of grill, or I've known people to cook on flower pots. It works. But one really good thing you've got to have is a set of good grill grates. That's key to winning. Um, another fun thing about steak cook-offs is, end of the day, get a chance to win a grand. So, less than eight hours work, you can walk home with $1,000 and a golden ticket to the World Championships. Pretty cool. Um, we're going to have a sample contest today. And how a normal steak cook-off runs is, you have a judges meeting in the morning or in the evening if it's a Friday contest. 
Um, go over the rules and anything in particular. Thanks our great sponsors such as Girl Great and Rec Tech. Couldn't do it without them. Yeah, right. um, then you draw poker chips or draw numbers. This is my poker chip from World Championships last year. It determines how you um, select your states. All the meat is provided. You don't have to bring any meat, so it puts everybody on the, an even playing field. Really nice, so I wouldn't be taking in a Wagyu and somebody taking in, you know, some roadkill type steak. If everybody has the same chances. Um, and once you draw your number, you line up. That's the hardest part for a group of adults to do is line up by number. You walk down the road, such as we have here, and you have 30 seconds to select your first state. Everybody goes through, then the hard part again, reversing the order. You come back through to pick your second state. You take your two states, you get to season it up, cook it, and then they're judged. You All you have to do to turn them in is put them in the provided clamshell container, which has an aluminum foil disc to help hold the heat in. There's no garnish, there's no cutting, your steak is turned in whole. The judges will cut it and judge it according to the criterion, which we'll discuss later after our competition. That's right, that's right, that's right. Um, I think it's about time we might yeah. need to find out about our competition and get this. That's right, that's going. right. So we've got a little mini SCA competition oh. set up today, Grill Greats versus Rec Tech. So uh, these are amateurs. These are not professional grillers. They do not grill and cook every day. These are two uh, professionals, uh, but they are professional workers. Uh, they take their jobs very seriously, so uh, they don't have much time to cook. Um, the first person I would like to introduce is uh, my sister-in-law, Miss Sally King. Oh, Sally. She will be representing uh, Team Rec Tech. She will be the Rec Tech amateur. Uh, the next amateur I'd like to introduce uh, is Mr. Hakeem Callender, the multi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is Grill Great's uh, multimedia hey. expert. Um, so, um, first and foremost, thank you guys both for wanting to volunteer and be here with us. Absolutely. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Uh, but I'm going to let uh, the chefs take um, their uh, amateur and then cook their steaks. All right, so I think it's only fair that Lady picks first. Or are we going to oh, pick the numbers? Oh, we got the numbers. The numbers? Got nice for try, ah. Ah. You're always looking for advantages, right? Yeah. Always. You're not cheating, you're not trying. That's right. <laughs> oh, there's only two. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> oh! What was it? We got number one. So now Sally will go through so and select your first steak, your, the one, one that you steak. think will be the most likely to get you the winner's you know trophy. You pick that one. All right, let's go for it. All right, Hakeem. All right, we're going to go with this one. There you go. Awesome. Take and now, Hakeem, you get to pick your second steak because we go through reverse order. Oh. Uh, can I come back? Can I converse? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with this one. Bow. At Real Estate Competitions, you've got 30 seconds to select your steak. And there we your go. competitors are the ones that will start seeing the those. Jeopardy thing. All right, so we got our steaks hmm. picked. And one thing you want to look at, too, is that the judges, because I know this, they want to eat the spinalis piece right here. So what Sally's going to do is they don't want to eat that piece of fat and gristle. So she's actually going to be trimming some of that because that's what we are doing over here at as ribeye experts. So, Miss Sally. Are we ready? Search. Oh, yeah. Come you, on. We're not, Ron, can we get an a la cuisine? You, you, do, you do what you do. Right. Oh. Let's start Hiya! <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Just so trim basically, it. What, nice what we're easy. looking to do is we want to kind of just okay. shave cool. off this outer. Same thing, fat. get that little piece off. Maybe just a little bit. Okay. But you want to get where it's thick. And try to keep it as and round as you can because it's all about visual. No thicker than that. There you go. I would take a little bit of that off. And then down here, oh, looking good. Completely. I think I leave just a little piece right in there. Oh, that tail off. Okay, and then I'm going to repeat it on the same. And then I'm going to show you how to tie it all first. Thing. Okay, gotcha. I think it looks pretty good. Maybe that little piece of silver right there. Start there. All right. And we're going to move it over here. And you said cut like around. Yeah. All right. So that like, looks like okay, a nice not all of it, right? no, round okay. steak. You know, as Woo! much as you can. Hey guys, uh, we need some hey guys, some man, it is, over here. It, 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 the, uh, oh crap, it is getting intense over here on the roller deck. Guys, who do you think is going to win in the 
Thomas Boyd. Rick Tick. Rick Tick. Rick Tick. Rick Tick. Grill Grapes. Grill Grapes. Grill Grapes. Trying to be fair. Steak, are you going to inject these ribeyes with any beer? Today we're not, because I can't let all my secrets out, because October 27th in Hazelhurst, Georgia, it's going down. Okay. You might have to have a rematch down there. Yeah. No, keep going. Keep going. Yep. We'll have a Thursday night steak off. There we go. Yep, yeah. so you're going to want to go ahead and, and get on that side of the... Keep going. Are you with us? Buddy! Now we got everybody trimming steaks. So Sally, what do we, what do we want to season these with? Okay. We're going to use... The Savannah River Rub. Savannah River Rub. God, I love that rub. And then we're gonna use some white lightning. Oh, oh, good choice. <laughs> so do a little bit off that that nose there, and be good to go. So when you're talking about layering flavor, and if you've not checked out our blog about flavorings uh, from last week, do so. When you're seasoning things, you always want to put your yeah, finer grain seasonings closer to the meat. And if there's anything sweet, lots of sugars, you want to get that close to protect. So we're going to put a little white lightning down first. We're going to put that really coarse, salty, crusty Savannah River rub over the top. It's going to make these steaks fantastic. And Sally, you are going to put me out of a job. Am I doing too much? No, this is perfect. So what we want to do is we're going to round these steaks out just like this. So if you want to grab that white lightning, give a dust or risky over the top. No, you're good. Go for it. Yeah, the white lightning is kind of right. fine. And so the idea here, the reason why we do that is we're going to tie it up. There you go. We're going to press it yep. up. Yep, get so that side. Got an even steak all the way across. You don't have a tapered. And if anything uh, gets on the board, layout. just roll it on the spinalis. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Mom. <laughs> go ahead and that guy. I'll get this one tied up. I'll let you tie this actually. Hold on. <laughs> Same way, right? I yep. cut around here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you too much instruction on this one. Now in the SCA, they're looking for these steaks to be medium. So we're going to cook these probably 2 minutes and 45 seconds. We'll rotate them 45, 245. We'll rotate them again and let them go and they'll be perfect. We're looking for an internal of about 135 to pull. And they'll be about 138 and a half when we serve. God, you are just killing it right now, Whoa. Sally. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would go ahead and... and that and this. All right, we're not going to release sure. all of the secrets. Mm -hmm. We're running a little long, so we'll be that. back. Okay. Uh, what at two thirty, guys? Three yeah. o'clock. It'll be three o'clock. We'll be back at three o'clock, and we'll have the results of the uh, Rec Tech versus Grill Grapes. Rec Tech, Rec Tech, Grill Grapes, Grill Grapes, Grill Grapes, Grill Grapes, Grill Grapes, Grill Grapes. Sounds pretty happy. Hey, look, look right here, guys. So we've got our steak cooking. We tested our steak because you get two. Now, they want it medium. Perfect. But look how tender this is. Look. I mean, I know this is a sharp knife, but I mean, like, wow. look at that meat cube. What is it? Did you just say meat cube? Yeah. Yeah, nobody says meat cube anymore, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's bringing it back. Wow. <laughs> so, so I, Sally, we're going with this one? So our amateurs that one. are going to plate them in our steak cook-off association judge slash expert slash champion uh, is going to come by and they're going to turn these into her and then she's going to judge them really quick. Do we have a uh, good cutting board that she can use? She can use this one. Cool. Yeah, What's everybody peep the real great steaks. I know y'all saw them cut, but if you check, check out ours, the texture, you know what I'm saying? We don't do meat cubes. We do meat rectangles over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so take a look at that. Yeah, baby. We may have to cube or, you know. <laughs> well, those are very, very I pretty. I equate things in meat deliciousness right. factor. This is like penthouse level right here. Mm. And both of these steaks are cooked on the amazing bullseye <laughs> with the grill grates on them. Uh, super, absolutely. super even. Uh, what? Uh, let's uh, check out this one right here. Check Jeff. this out. So we're at 600 on the dome. We've had this open for a little while because we've been cooking. We are getting... 745, 753, 752 at the grate. And we've had this open cooking. So 763 was the max. Again, we were cooking ribeyes. We had this opened up at least four different times. What do you think of their steak? She can be honest. It's good. She can't even speak. <laughs> <laughs> she can't even speak. All right, so we're going to have our steak cook off champion, expert. 
come in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm gonna just gonna mix these up a little bit. <laughs> Your steak is just teared over here, Sally. All right, Miss Peggy. Peggy steps up. The professional, Peggy. Peggy, the professional. Huh? How would you like to taste these, ma'am? Okay. How this would work in a traditional SCA event is the cook would come up to the turn-in table, turn it in. There's a person that will be here, and they will put an envelope on it, which contains a $100 raffle bill. ticket. <laughs> I haven't had that yet, but um, <laughs> this is part of the double blind technique to ensure the total fairness. You will take off half of that ticket. You sign that ticket at that point, because they, they don't know if it's Jody Flanagan, Bob Smith, whoever. They literally, and you'll see in the awards, I will call one of these two tickets. I don't know who it is. Cool. I take the first steak that comes to me as the cutter. I'm not judging yet because I'm trying to be four people. Um, the cutter will take the steak. They're normally turned in in white turn in clamshells with a little um, aluminum disc. And um, that helps keep the heat in, keeps things neater. I have gloves on for all intents purposes here. They will, I don't have enough room to cut it, and I am left-handed here. What they will do is they will cut across the eye, and then it's placed back in the container as such, presented to the judge. Now Judge Peggy's coming out. When I get the steak, I will open it up, I look at it for appearance score. Does it look, do I want to eat it? Is it something that's appealing to me? At this time, I also judge the doneness, which is um, cooked to medium on that one to 10 scale. There is a picture flowing around here of it. At that point, I cover it back up. I make my notes with my pen that somewhere has disappeared. This is all to try to give the competitor the best chance possible to have the best steak presented to the judge. So I'll make my notes on, I write the ticket number at the top. Then I put my notes down. I open it back up. Notice I've covered the scores up so nobody out there in internet land can see. And this is where I cut my sample. You guys already saw it. With a plastic knife. This helps me judge my texture score. It's um, a combination of tenderness and other factors. So I'm going to cut across the spinalis, cut through here. I'm noticing how it cuts here. And I'm cutting, the goal is no more than a half ounce portion. It gives all judges an equal opportunity to have a piece of this nice tender spinalis because, hey, what's the best part of the um, ribeye? That's spinalis. I'll cover it up. At this point, I'm judging how does it taste? Um, how does it feel in my mouth? Because this is another portion of that texture score. So notice it's one fork, one knife per steak. So this steak would travel on to the next judge on the table. There's five judges per table. Super secret, can't look. <laughs> Matt's getting here. <laughs> in the mind of the judge. Your steak is disappearing over here. <laughs> I see. I haven't even seen that. Is smell a uh, thing you're judging on, Judge Peggy? The Not smell? officially. It could be a portion of the overall impression because there is the five categories of judging are appearance, doneness, texture, taste, and overall impression. So it could. It's not. That could there's no taste and impression. There's no olfactory category officially there. So I push this that steak down to the next. I'm moving on to my next steak. I write the number down. I open it up again. This is where I'm looking for. Well, of course, I have to cut it since we don't have a cutter here. Cutter. 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 I'm gonna try to be slick and cut it in here so I don't have to move it as much. And I haven't cut myself, which is pretty impressive. So at this point, the cutter will take it covered 
to the judge, which is going to judge the um, doneness and appearance score. No looksies. No looksies. <laughs> <laughs> Beer down, something down. And I take that steak on a date. Really? Where are you going with that steak? <laughs> the movies. <laughs> get it, the movies. The movies. Get the movies. Yeah. So I'm cutting through here, yeah. judging my texture. My taste, and here we go. Okay, so at this point, once you judge a steak, you would put your form in the envelope and it goes through the line. Then it goes to a scorer's table. At this point, each judge doesn't know what's happened. The scorer puts it into the computer and so there's computer involved. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's data yes. entry. There is a data entry position. It's actually just Spence. an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. It's hard to do the math when you're taking the Yeah, and with the computer doesn't make beer. We don't have anybody so while we're waiting KPMG on the computer here to Peggy fix this. To, uh, to dial up the scores that we do, want to say once again thank you so much uh, to Brad and Susan Barrett for allowing us to hang out on the grilling deck today. Uh, also to Chef Michael, we want to thank him very much uh, for allowing us to come out here. Um, but again, uh, it is National Virginia Day, so thank you to everybody who's out there in the wonderful state of Virginia. Also, um, remember that Grill Greats... Jody, Virginia, you know it's for lovers, right? Virginia yeah, is yeah. for lovers. You know, you just gotta know that. And now everybody here knows that. <laughs> so we have we have gifts for you guys. So before you all leave, we got a grill great bag full of goodies, our tongs and some other stuff, gloves and all kinds of things here for you guys. We have hats for the uh, the gals as well. Yeah. Look at how keen is a gal, huh? Yeah. Gals with the pink hat. You get the pink hat. <laughs> and, and Brad, it's it's been a long relationship. Rec Tech and Grill Grace. Uh, two great stuff, things man. together. I Georgia mean, making great things. Georgia, that's right. Two Georgia companies making great stuff, making each other better. We enjoy yeah. your business and we enjoy your friendship as much as we can. It's an honor and pleasure Chef to be, be in both of y'all's presence for sure. My guys are awesome. Thank yeah. you, Chef. Well, I've got my tabulated results. <laughs> Woo! And I'm going to do this just as we would in a regular event. I call it the last four digits of the ticket number, so I hope y'all know which one was which your here. Social. Um, that's how I won't call a name because I don't at this point know who it is and I'll call second place and SEA events they're known to give prizes for DAL um, that ass last I didn't say it last year it was a handle of vodka that's not bad yeah it's not bad drink the sorrow so in second place with a total score of 48.2. Whoa, that's a high Whoa, score. That's a high score. That's a high score. <laughs> Out of the possible... 100. No. <laughs> 50.9. So, um, ticket number 1, 2, 3, 4. Yay, in second one. place. Oh! Woo! Second place is like 800 bucks, so we're good. <laughs> A trip to the Bahamas. We want a trip. <laughs> <laughs> you did, but you're working. <laughs> Both states were awesome. I um, could compete with any of the competitors I've competed with all year. So great job for Thank our you. amateurs. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Okay. We really appreciate you being here. Representing the SCA, I mean, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. A big thank you to the grill great grill deck. Yes, that's right. A big thank you to Peggy. We love you to death. Thank you for being part of our family. Uh, again, we do want to let you guys know that February 21st through 24th, you can win yourself $1,000 while hanging out with Brad Barrett in the Bahamas. How amazing is that? But, Sally wants to come. <laughs> so we're, Sally, we're going to pay for Sally. She's going to go compete for Rag Tech. 
Peggy's gonna go too. Who else wants to go? <laughs> Susan, the you wanna go? You, you go to the Bahamas. You go to the Bahamas. You go to the Bahamas. But no, no, in all seriousness, uh, also, how many people did I get screened? Right, right. We also want to, uh, the SCA World Championships will be October 4th through 7th, so if you are interested in going to that, make sure you set your dates. Also, we want to say uh, good luck to all of our Rec Tech and Grill Great teams competing in the American Royal. Uh, we wish you luck. Guys, if you need anything, just let us know. We'll be there in a hurry to help you out. Don't forget about our YouTube uh, contest, our caption this contest. Greg goes to the grocery store every Wednesday and lets you know what we're doing for fun day friday uh also it is reddit thursdays we are deep into reddit subreddits subcategories things of that nature so please follow us on reddit and make sure you follow uh grill greats as well uh facebook and instagram are their main channels um but uh don't uh hesitate to go to their website and check out everything that they have um brad it was it was it's always an honor and a pleasure Ron, it is always an honor and pleasure to hang out with you. It's always great to be here. Akeem. Pleasure to meet you. Where can today's winners meet, uh, receive their prizes? Oh, thank you so much again. Congratulations to all the winners of last week's contest. You can email madeline at rectechgirls.com. That's M-A-D-E-L-I-N-E at rectechgirls.com. Again, thank you to all of our winners. Thank you to everybody who, who's watched. Make sure you set your notifications. That way you know when we're going live um, from... Uh, the grilling deck here in Cartersville, Georgia. I'm Jody Flanagan. Uh, I guess we'll all say it together. Uh, next time, we'll see you at, at the, the Red Deck. deck. Yee! Yee!